Right, so today I wanted to make a little video about AliExpress bikes slash Chinese bikes. Are they worth it? What are the pros and cons? Now, first, I'm going to go define what I mean by an AliExpress bike. I'm not talking about the Seeker bike that Cam Nichols reviewed that's like four grand. I'm talking about Windspace, Yolio, Elves, people like them, Trifox, cheapish brands, good value for money, that sort of type of thing. So we'll go through the pros first, then we'll go through the cons, and then obviously sort of give my final thoughts. Obviously, they're probably going to be a bit biased because I have a Chinese bike. Um, just to let you know, I got given an Elves, but like half price. So I still bought it with my own money, just didn't pay full retail. So first of all, we've got the cost. Obviously, a lot cheaper than like a Western brand. Uh, but to, like, let's say a frame you can normally get for maybe a thousand pounds ish, like fifteen hundred dollars. And then if you're trying to get an equivalent S Works, you're probably spending like what four K, three K on a frame. So you're gonna, you could say at least half price. Okay, we're gonna talk about quality later in the cons, but in terms of cost, very cheap. Uh, next thing, which I think is the biggest thing for me, is that there's no weight. You don't have to, at the moment, there's a big sh shortage with a lot of bikes. Um, it takes a long time to get bikes. There's no shortage with um, AliExpress bikes. Generally, if you buy them, they're gonna come within a month, which is, at the moment, pretty decent. Uh, then, I think part like, number three is you get exactly what you want. You can design the paint job if you want. You can pick from paint jobs if you don't wanna design your own one. You can get rim, you can get disc. You can get integrated bars with it. You can choose the width of the integrated bars. And obviously you can build the frame yourself to exactly the specifications you want. So in terms of customizability, it doesn't really come close because it is actually really hard to get frame sets on their own at the moment, just because there's a lot of issues, as I said previously, uh, with the bike industry having shortages, meaning that they wanna sell complete bikes, not frames. So in that sense, it's actually really good that you can just buy the frame, it's gonna come in a month, and you can have it rim or disc. And for me, wanting a rim brake bike, how many can I get and get a TCR from a main, big brands and that's literally it. Okay, Colnago, Pinarello, but they're ridiculously expensive. But from the big brands, it's just giant with a TCR that's actually in rim. So in that sense, I think it's sort of a no brain. If you need a rim brake bike, that's just what you have to do. I think the paint jobs is also really cool as well because you can actually, if you message Els for instance, hit Simon the boy, he'll sort you out and you can get your own custom painted frame, which is really cool and doesn't cost more, or it might cost a little bit more, or if you do it with Trek, it'll cost a lot more. And then I think the last part, which maybe people wouldn't want, but for me, I think it's quite cool is that you actually have a unique bike. Like when I ride my Elves, no one else in the country has an Elves. Like my size, my color, no one in the UK is gonna have it. So it's quite cool that you do actually have your own unique bike. I don't think people know what it is either. I think people probably think, oh, that's quite cool. He's got an Elves, what's this? Um, so in that sense, I think it's pretty sick. The only disadvantage is, we're gonna go through now, cons. Well, if you don't have your own bike parts, you're in big trouble because you can't buy group sets at the moment. So if you wanna buy a brand new bike and build it up, it's gonna be quite tough just because it's really hard to buy complete group sets at the moment. So I wouldn't really say that's necessarily a con on the bike themselves. That's just a situational issue at the moment where you actually just can't buy a product. So I guess that is a con because it means at the moment you would probably struggle, you, you wouldn't struggle to get the frame, but you might struggle to get the components. Um, then I think the other thing is just the warranty, like how good is the L's warranty, for instance. I mean, I think it's like two years, which is decent, but it's not like giant, which is unlimited, like lifetime warranty, and also how easy will they deal with you? I don't know. And then also quality control, like if the bike turns up at the bike shop, let's say a Specialized, and the fork has a little bit too much epoxy in it, or like too much of the mold, they'll just sand it out for you. For instance, my L's did come with a little bit more, had to file it off, which is fine, but like it's not, ready to go necessarily out the box it probably is probably a bit of an error but it is quite bad considering they knew it was sending it to me and i was gonna do a video a review on it but like that sort of thing you just have to like i guess take into account it's not like disastrous but like again if you bought it from a bike shop they probably just sort that for you um and then i guess the other, last part is that you have to build it yourself which i guess is a positive or a negative so that's why i've left it to last because you can customize all your own parts as i said before pick your own wheels tires gears handlebars because let's be honest if you buy a brand new bike the odds on the wheels being the ones you want or like you know all the handlebars being the right size or the stem length being the right size very low however i think this is also a negative because if you don't know how to build a bike then obviously you're gonna have to pay someone to build it which adds the cost and also the time so in conclusion what would i do well as i have an elves you can probably guess that i think that's the best option but the only reason i think it's the best option is okay i am a terrible mechanic so that's why 
for me, it was a fine option because I had ETAP, so I can just like bolt everything on and then just pair it, and it's quite easy to do. But I think if I was going to do like a mechanical one, it'd be a little bit more work. But then I guess it's a thing, it's like a, a challenge. But in conclusion, I think it's very hard to like justify spending so much money on bikes these days when you can get very, very good quality bikes from AliExpress, from China, um, Yolio, Elves, Windspace, all of them are top quality stuff. And like, I rode my TCR one day, next day built on my Elves, rode it, I literally couldn't tell the difference. And okay, you might say I'm biased, but like, and I also, I have no numbers, like obviously I do a lot of watts per kilo, but I don't do many watts. But even so, I can really tell the difference with stiffness. It handles nice, it's like all the rest of it. Like I think, I think it's, maybe if you were a big boy sprinter, you might be able to th tell the difference. But for me personally, I think the quality is basically the same. Um, so in that sense, I think if you're comfortable building it up and comfortable with the fact that you have your own components to do it with, I would definitely go for an AliExpress bike um, and would definitely recommend an Elvis Vanyard if you want a lightweight climbing bike because it just does the job. Rim brake looks outrageous, paint job is top, and just standard like 27.2 seat post so you can get a really light one, no oversized like headset, just standard stuff. And I think that is also the th same with many other AliExpress Chinese bikes. So anyway, cheers for watching, hope you did enjoy. Let me know your comments about AliExpress bikes below. Uh, what do you think of like Chinese uh, direct to consumer bikes? Are they worth it or is it a death trap waiting to happen? Cheers for watching, see you in the next one.